and welcome to another episode from our season four series, our interview series. I'm sitting here today with Grit Pauling, who's the GM of the 25 Hours Hotel in Cologne. Grit, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you on the show. Thanks to have you here. Thank you. Grit, tell us a little bit about your background. It's a question we open every interview with. I'm curious to know what your background is. What was it that motivated you to come into hotels and start a career in this industry? Yeah, I just started right away uh, after school to work in uh, different hotels, different types of hotels, um, design, five star. And after some years, I also um, do the do caterings and big event locations for more than three, three four years um, for the um, chef of the national soccer team in Munich. Afterwards, I just go to uh, both hotels uh, with two hotels in Munich and one in Frankfurt. Yeah, and then I moved to uh, Cologne and now I'm here and it, there was no other opportunity other to work in the hotel. So yeah. It was always my passion right. uh, to work with other people and to work with guests and find a solutions and make something special. Mm -hmm. do, do you come from a hospitality background? Were your family in no, hospitality? Nothing. So my father is an um, electrician okay. engineer and my mother uh, just worked for different offices. Yeah. So okay. no one works in a hotel okay. hospitality. Okay, so, great. so as a general manager, there's a lot of tasks that you need to to look over during mm -hmm. the day. Yeah. What does a typical day look like for, for grit pooling and especially now during the current situation that most hotels are facing? There is no typical day, so every day is uh, totally different. We have really some um, new uh, structures we need to go um, a little bit more out of our comfort zone. So my day starts in the morning, just have a look at the breakfast, just um, do the events uh, downstairs. Then afterwards, I just go to the lunch or to the storage rooms and in the housekeeping. So every day is totally different. A lot of talking to, to our staff, to guests, just to help everybody because it's a really special situation. Yes. And we are really good booked, so we are almost fully booked at the weekend, and we didn't expect that. And it's a lot of work and totally different times. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. just need to wear the mask. You have the this, yeah, all the hygienic uh, stuff. Mm. And so. Mm. Yeah, it's great because when we spoke on the phone prior, you you did say that you were doing the hotel was trading very well. Yeah even through this period, which uh, I'll be honest, was, was a surprise. I thought yeah. that's very interesting. So why do you think that is? I mean, clearly that's a domestic market yeah. rather than an international. Um, why do you feel that that's, that's been the case? Um, because we uh, just closed for one week during uh, COVID and afterwards we opened directly. Other hotels still uh, were closed for one or two months and we are something special so we're just not the bad and the wifey and um, the garage mm -hmm. and the restaurant mm -hmm. we are 24, uh, 25 hours so we are um, very emotional and also we are a little bit different and yeah we try to um, get new customers with you can find us on Airbnb on eBay um, we have and now we have long stay um, opportunities here mm -hmm. and yeah we search for something different and that's why um, yeah. the guests are coming yeah. and also if you can't travel um, outside of this uh, of the country you visit your own country yeah. and Cologne is quite famous for historical parts for the um, for the dome. Yeah. Yep. And yep. that's why um, from the Benelux uh, countries, they're still coming after uh, the season right now. Right. And right. That's pretty cool. Great. But also already uh, some business uh, travelers really? are already here again. They're already starting to come yeah. back. That's great news. We'll come to the, the distribution side of things mm -hmm. a little bit later. But before we get there, um, could you tell us a little bit about over the last six months, mm. you know, the world kind of changed in March. Yeah. How did you approach everything from March onwards uh, up until today? Have, have you made dram dramatic changes in your operations or has it been a fairly, um, let's say, a fluid process for you? How has it been managed generally? It was a fluent process um, because, yeah, we thinking from day to day, from week to week, and uh, we just have to have a look at the restrictions, what's new, what's coming, and um, we try to find a new way um, 
how can we survive this uh, thing and how can we do the best of it and we change some little things um, even in the room uh, we always get the little um, robot in the bed mm -hmm. we took it off from the bed we do not have any deco um, decoration cushions or something like that mm -hmm. and but the rest the nini is fully booked we get the new uh, standards and new menu with the QR codes and something like that mm -hmm. which is pretty cool because um, Germany is a little bit slow in this kind with uh, digital, uh, digital uh, solutions mm. so that's a good yeah the good part of this yeah. thing yeah. we can test the new new stuff like yeah. QR codes and something like that did you have to make any adjustments to your technology to support that adjustment for example through Q QR codes or through the ordering systems in the restaurants or anything like that was no. there any changes there yeah we uh, just have the QR codes for the menu and the, um, the guest starter but um, the rest is uh, running very well and okay. in the same way okay. and also with the reservation tool or something um, still ongoing yeah. and there's no big change. Um, we also knew for delivery, uh, we never done delivery before in the time of the lockdown. We said okay yeah, now it's the good uh, time to start with it and we did delivery by Lifarando, but yeah. also um, by ourselves with bikes, our minis in front of the hotel yeah. and so yeah. that was pretty cool and yeah. you have the time to, to test some things, what's good for the menu, what do you need and that's hmm. a big change for us as well. Hmm. How did the public react to the, the delivery services that you put in? Really, really good. Um, they yeah. called and oh, finally we're so happy because it was not possible to go to any restaurant or something like that. And um, We're not the typical burger or uh, pasta or pizza. And in Cologne we just have three uh, restaurants in that kind of way, so hmm. it's really special and we get a big, big fan base so, and everybody knows Nini from other cities, from other uh, journeys, so. Yeah, yeah, great. And what was the message to the staff and also to your guests when everything happened? Because obviously there needed to be some kind of, and I'm sure there was probably a corporate message that came from corporate, but mm. what was generally your message to the staff to say, hey guys, We'll get through this, don't worry. Yeah. Or how did you approach that? Uh, yeah, we get through this together. That mm. was the, the big, big message. We, we can't do it by ourselves. We need everybody of you. And we get a big meeting in the first days that would be um, with a message that's really tough. It's getting tough and we didn't know what's in the next weeks, months. We have no solution at the moment. But um, we can fight it, we can stand together and that really helped. Our service team just helped the housekeeping to clean the rooms, our bar team just stand at the reception and uh, checked in or checked out the guests and taking care of them and it was pretty cool to see yeah. that um, it was a real team building mm -hmm. and that was really nice. So it probably brought the team more together. Yeah. Right? Definitely. That's great. That's, That's one great. of the good sides. Yeah. And um, also, right now, they're working better together. And um, yeah. Hmm. So hopefully. That's good. And and on the flip side to the guests itself, how did you approach the the message to the guests to, to con I guess to put them at ease to say that it's okay to stay. It's safe. Yeah. Then we um, we just also let them know we do everything we need to do, we have to do um, for their security, that they're feeling safe. Mm. And we do more cleaning. We um, provide the, uh, rooms with yeah one letter notes and throw it away. And for every guest, we uh, do more uh, cleaning stuff and also in the public areas. And. In Cologne, it's really strange because they are not frightened at all. So when you're coming to a restaurant in the evening, that's like every day before uh, Corona, and yeah. so that's pretty yeah. cool. And we give them uh, this kind of feeling that they can sit down feeling safe, mm -hmm. and uh, we do everything we could. Mm -hmm. do, how did you feel the government, the local government, supported businesses like yours? Was there generally good support from them, or was it? Was the communication from them about what you should be doing as a business effective or were there areas where perhaps it was lacking? It was really difficult in the first days because uh, on the one day we have to close the bar and two days later the restaurant, two days later the hotel. So it was really risky to plan a day in advance. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I don't mind because nobody expected that kind of situation and nobody has a solution and when we called our city department we got answers and they really try to give us solutions or possibilities and yeah about money or something it's not that easy we know but we are also very affected but there are other yeah, like uh, the industry around the fairs, uh, events, yeah. concerts are more infected right now. And yes. now for it's us, a it's a little bit up to us how much uh, we can go, how much we can earn. And mm -hmm. so I never felt lost. I felt well informed. You need to have a look on the internet every day, every hour uh, in the first weeks. But um, in Cologne, it was really good organized. So essentially what you're saying is the earlier weeks were perhaps a little hectic in terms of the messages that were coming from governmental organizations, but then they settled down and then there was a, a consistent pattern to what you were expected to do as a business yeah. to support the community. Yes, of course. And also after the first weeks, months, there were not big changes anymore. When um, we could open the restaurant and we could open the bar, so it goes step by step and it was good organized and um, now they are not big changes unfortunately um, but uh, we know what to do and what we could plan maybe for New Year's Eve it's just right uh, yeah. around the corner it is, yeah. so it's different this time yeah. but we are yeah. now um, in the possibility to plan something mm. to organize something do you think you'll be able to do something for New Year's Eve I mean all of the, the Christmas markets have been cancelled yeah so the big Christmas markets are closed yeah. the carnival uh, yeah. When it's, that happened it's, this it's year, crazy, like, right? well, yeah, it's the first time in the history of Cologne. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And for New Year's Eve or Christmas, we can't plan any big parties with dancing and a lot of people. Oh, but yeah. we can do nice dinners like last year here. We do the same in the monkey bar, so where you meet uh, friends, family, mm. have a big table, uh, just sitting together, eat and enjoying um, the view and the fireworks. So yeah. it would be good to see okay. it also. Good, I'm sure it will. Now look, focusing a little bit on the technology I mm -hmm. asked previously, but I'd like to try to drill in a little bit more on that. Have, I guess 24 hours as a company, but more specifically you as a hotel, have there been any adjustments to the technology stack that you have now in the hotel to support the um, corona situation. So for example, a contactless type of environment for guests. Is there any type of contactless technology that guests can interact with the hotel that you put in place since corona or have you been able to maintain trading and, and, and operations with the existing tech that you put in place? Yeah, we're able to, to um, work with the existing things. Mm -hmm. um, you have the restriction that you get all the contact details, but there's not a big change in our um, uh, technologies. Um, we are planning, or the head office is planning a lot of stuff for the future to doing things more easy um, for the staff and also for a change um, for the guests, And but not at the moment. Um, Okay, no. so, it's, so you've been able to maintain basically yeah. status quo. Yeah. yeah. Because there's been a lot of talk in the industry about yeah. you know, having the possibility or really the need to introduce yeah. contactless solutions like wild, uh, mobile keys or anything yeah. like that, self check in, that type of thing. Yeah, and um, this is uh, not because of Corona, it's mm. a big. Um, big point because also you can't find apprentice anymore or uh, a lot of stuff working on the holidays and the night shift or something mm. and that's the bigger problem and that's why we also try to find solutions for later like um, the self check-in I uh, see hotels where work really well because the staff has more time for the guests to interact to um, upselling to um, show them the city and mm. something like that and mm. it's more comfortable for the staff and also um, the advantage for the guests is even more bigger and so that's we're hoping in for in, yeah soon that we can do something like that Good. that's more comfortable for guests yeah. and of course contactless payment in Hamburg we tried to um, open the hotel again without any cash but Germans love cash. Yes, they do. Yeah, it's really. It's a very cash. Yeah, in the first society, two yeah. weeks, we um, didn't have any cash in the hotel. We said no, just card. Yeah. And 
a lot of people, also the older generation, stick to the mm -hmm. to the builds. Yep, they pull it from under their bed and yeah. bring it there with them. <laughs> yeah, and I even I have no cash in my pocket, yeah. and also when I'm traveling to Australia or something. Yeah. I'm the same. Every, everything I don't carry with the car or now yeah. with my mobile phone. So yeah. I even have my pocket with me, just my mobile phone, and yeah. just hope that it's enough charge. So yeah. the yeah. battery is not too low. But yeah. have you found that there's been a, um, uh, I guess a, a, a request from guests that have stayed with you to have or support contactless options, or have have they been fairly supportive of what's been in place? They haven't raised it at all. No, like that, they're not asking for um, okay. contactless payment or contactless check-in. Okay. Um, they're coming also very close that we have to go a little yeah. bit more back. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, because everybody was happy to uh, travel again, to mm. uh, interact with other people, not only family or friends they see every day, mm. and meet strangers, become friends or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I think some, sometimes when you're a business traveler, you don't like to talk to anybody. You like just to get a key, go or just mm -hmm. check in via mobile and go upstairs. But the other guests, uh, typical holiday guests or um, they're on vacation, they like to talk a lot. They like to talk to you. They like to um, explain how was their day, what yeah. they like to do, or ask you some things. And yeah, yeah, there are two types of guests. Okay, great. Let's talk a little bit about your distribution now. You did mention earlier eBay mm -hmm. and um, Airbnb. So I, I kind of wanted to understand how you adjusted your distribution strategy over the last six months to support the, the current crisis that you're in. Um, and then following that, what's the mix, if you like, from direct bookings to um, anything that comes via third mm. party? So how did, how did that affect you and what was your approach to that? Yeah, we need to find new ways to get new customers or that we are not like uh, like big companies. We are 13 hotels mm. uh, in, in Europe and getting more and more uh, like in Copenhagen, Florence or uh, Dubai. But we still live it under dark, so you have to uh, know 25 hours to love it. Yep. And um, we try to find new ways, uh, eBay, Airbnb. Um, it's very interesting that yeah. eBay, I've never heard of that before. Yeah, me yeah. too. I just saw when I'm on eBay, uh, we are there vacation, uh, for vacation houses or something like that in Spain. But never thought about that it could be hotels in Germany. But we get a, a long stay booking via eBay right. for one year. Wow. So that, yeah, he's staying one year in the hotel, and that's also a big part in Cologne because we get the TV uh, productions yep. here, and they stay for three weeks, four weeks, or uh, even longer. Oh, you have a lot of consulting who have a project, uh, they have projects here maybe for six months, for one year, or just for one month. And mm. that's why we say, okay, we getting offers for that because we need more and new customers and they are a little bit sensible with the prices so of course we reduce the prices yeah. after afterwards we have a summer package a summer sale for uh, july august because we didn't know okay are they mm. coming are they mm. traveling or mm. not mm. Mm. so that's why we searching always for new channels and also there are a lot of direct bookings but the main part is the third part. Is it? Yeah. Right. Like booking Expedia. Yeah. yeah. So you're still very dependent on those channels. Yeah. 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 Were you able to hold your rate or did it drop um, a dramatically small amount? What was the percentage perhaps that you had to drop rates at? Was there a huge percentage or was it yeah. fairly consistent? Yeah. There was. Was that in Cologne generally? Did every hotel in Cologne kind of face that same situation where they had to feel it that they were, it was necessary? Everybody reduced the rate. Yeah. Uh, some hotels even more than the others. Mm. Um, we also about 50% in right. the first time. Um, now we are just raising. They're coming back again. Up. That's yeah. good. Yeah. But in the first weeks, we thought, okay, we need customers. Yeah, of course. Because when he's coming one time for business, he get maybe a second trip or third trip, and we get new contracts already uh, mm. because mm. of that. And um, that's why we reduce it. And we get a fully booked hotel. The other hotels who have, they have higher prices. They have just 20% um, 
occupancy. So, yeah, yeah. what do you prefer? Yeah, exactly. 70 and yeah. 90 or yeah. 20? Yeah. So, and yeah. we prefer yeah. to get the yeah. life back in the hotel yeah. and yeah. Exactly. Uh, open yeah. everything. And if you can maintain your operating costs yeah. so that you can still show that you're coming ahead, then that's obviously a, posi a positive. Because an empty hotel is really expensive. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't feel the same. No. <laughs> when you just have, it was really weird for the first week. We just got 10 or 20 people in the hotel. Yeah, and you know, every, so weird. every guest that by uh, by their names and just they're coming down in the cafe to pick up uh, the breakfast because it wasn't just allowed to um, serve takeaway breakfast and yeah. I was there uh, every morning and give them the food and what kind of coffee are you like the black uh, black coffee you like yeah. the cappuccino and it was yeah. really fam yeah like family yeah it was really cool yeah yeah well that's what these types of I guess hotels try to encourage is that family feeling, that, mm -hmm. that community feeling. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, so two more questions. Um, the front desk, when it comes to design, uh, a lot of people now are talking about the, the possibility of, of doing away with the front desk mm -hmm. at hotels and using the available technology to encourage staff to, to be more interactive with guests um, and a more sociable perspective rather than having a barrier there between them. What's your opinion of the front desk? Should future hotels perhaps be designed without them? Or do you feel that there's still a, a, a place for having a front desk? It depends on, on the hotels, like the five-star hotels will need it for the rest of the life because it's the first, um, yeah, the first person for the guests and also for us this the front desk team is very important for everybody for guests for um, yeah packages everything they receive a lot of messages and of course the new technologies give them space to interact with the guests to do a little bit more than just check in check out and uh, answering calls and, and mails and I think it's important that you have a good mix because people are so so different so it would be great if you have a, as a guest the possibility to check in with a person or even by uh, uh, online or yeah. uh, Bluetooth just with your mm. with your phone so I think both ways are the right one in combination so a hotel without the front desk I can't imagine yeah. because it's a heart it's yeah. the, um, the first impression uh, the first welcome and there the journey starts and it's this decision, a decision if it's a good journey or a bad one, mm -hmm. and it's really important for that. Mm -hmm. So I okay. can't imagine a okay. hotel. Also, if you're going to a hostel, okay, but not in a hotel um, like this or um, even five stars, three stars. It's very important. Okay. All right. Great. And finally, when you travel, what what. Uh, what kind of bugs you when you go uh, and stay at hotels or when you're doing personal trips, not business, but yeah. you're going on a, on a holiday, you're really looking to relax. What, what kind of do you notice when you go into other hotels and what annoys you in that sense that you think will be done better? Service is for me the most important thing. Um, when I'm feeling welcome and treated well and I do not ask for anything special, it's really important. If they are not friendly, no good morning, uh, no good evening or something like that, that's an, really annoying and I give them right away the feedback because I'm a customer, I'm nice to you, so being nice to me is the easiest way um, to, uh, to make a nice day for me and it even costs no time, no money. Yeah. And also, um, the room really needs to be clean. I hate it when you find something dirty and something... If something is broken, okay, I doesn't care about it, but uh, it has to be clean and the um, staff needs to be friendly and yeah, if they're mis doing mistakes, I don't worry if they do it in the right way. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's okay. just the two big parts. Okay. So that's why a little bit picky in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, really. Well, it's kind of like when you sit down with chefs, you know, when, yeah. you, when you go to a nice restaurant with a chef and they often criticize the food, I find hoteliers are very similar in that sense. Like, ah, oh, you know, that could be better or we could do this or you could do that. So. Yeah, it's also not even uh, just in the hotel. It's, uh, when I'm in the restaurant, you yeah. see the service, you, um, 
my favorite restaurants here in Cologne not serving the best food in the world, yeah. but they have the nicest uh, waiters and you're feeling welcome and yeah, they know your name and that's one plus. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. Actually, that leads to another question. What would be a, a good tip for someone if coming into Cologne who's not living here? What's a good restaurant that you could recommend they go to? The Nini. The Nini, uh, of course. Obviously, <laughs> not even just while I'm working here because of the view and also the center, um, the Belgian uh, squ uh, mm -hmm. quarter here is really nice with a lot of bars around and you have the nice view here. And um, another restaurant maybe would be the Kowalski. It's just a, a little restaurant on the um, two streets away mm -hmm. and it's really nice. The waiters are really helpful and charming and the food is really good quality. Um, it's doing by two brothers and nice. they have next to it it's a little kiosk we call it and then you have just a beer or hang around and it's lovely. really nice that's cologne yeah lovely all right good calling thank you so much thank you really appreciate you joining us today yeah, me too thanks thank so you much. thank you okay folks there you go so you've got your recommendations of where to eat when you come to cologne and of course where to stay i can actually vote for this hotel it's a lovely property um, so if you do ever come to cologne make sure you visit and uh, make sure you subscribe and tune in next time for our next interview. And until next time, thanks for watching. It's bye for now.